In a world filled with death, war, and evil, how are we to face what feels like an unknowable future? What do we do with our anxiety regarding the days ahead? Where does the church find hope and strength for their hearts in these days? We find hope in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. In this sermon, Pastor Krieger helps us to see how the grace God gives and the peace that we have from Him overflows into every part of our lives. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 28. The Word of God for our meditation this morning is the final verses of St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 28. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Those are the final words of St. Paul in this little letter to the church in Thessalonica. And they echo the very first words that he shared with them. If you go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1, grace and peace to you. Grace and peace. It's the reason that Paul wrote this letter to that church in Macedonia. He wanted them to know grace. He wanted them to feel in their hearts the peace that God had won for them in Jesus. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters, is the reason that I am preaching to you this morning. It's the reason that Pastor Borman and I here at Mount Lebanon decided that we wanted to preach through 1 Thessalonians in these weeks following Easter, as we're all worshiping from our homes. Because we wanted you to know the grace of God and to feel within your hearts that wonderful peace that God has won for you through Jesus Christ, your Savior. Chapters 4 and 5 of 1 Thessalonians have a very heavy emphasis on Christian living. And so that's what we've been hearing now over the last couple of weeks. It's what you'll see if you read through those two chapters all at once. It starts off in chapter 4, verse 3, where the Apostle Paul says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Your faith in God is strong, he says. Now let that faith be evidenced more and more. You've been showing love, not only there in Thessalonica, but throughout the region of Macedonia. Now increase in love more and more. And then he gives them, he gives us, so many examples of just how we can do that, how we can live this sanctified life, how we can show the evidence of our faith and love in our lives. He started out in chapter 4 by talking about our lives of sexual purity. He instructs us to refrain from sexual immorality, whether that's through our actions or even through the thoughts that we think. It could be through the materials that we read or the things that we watch or listen to or search for. Stay away from sexual immorality, he warns us. And he urges and encourages us to find a way to to learn how to control 
our bodies, to have this self-control over our bodies and over the God-given urges that we feel so that we might conduct our lives in a holy and an honorable way. Finally, he says, I don't want you to be taking advantage of any of your brothers and sisters in this way. And that's, again, not just through our actions, but through the things that we think about them. Or maybe it's through the movies and books and shows and songs that we as their brothers and sisters in Christ are are recommending to them. So Paul has a lot to say there about our lives of sexual purity. But that's just the beginning. Then he continues on, live a life of quiet humility. Mind your business and mind your own business. Live a productive life in a way that you are able to provide yourself so that you don't have to be a burden to others. Be sober-minded and alert and awake in your life so that you know what is coming, so that you can be prepared for the returning of our Savior and always wear throughout your life that armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Be prepared day in and day out to face the temptations of the devil and this sinful world that we live in, even the temptations that come from your own sinful human heart. But don't only be prepared to wage that battle for yourself. Also be on the lookout for your brothers and sisters in the faith so that you can encourage them and build them up in the faith. And then he goes on, show love and care for your spiritual leaders and live at peace with them. Boldly warn those who are being lazy or who are being disruptive to other people's faith. Lift up anyone who is downtrodden, who is feeling anxious or depressed or disheartened. Encourage them and lift them up. Build up the faith of those whose faith is weak. In everything that you do, live in peace and in patience and in harmony with one another. Always seek the good of everyone around you and and never try to serve back wrong with wrong. Never try to get revenge. Don't quench or, or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit by disregarding, rejecting, or despising God's word and sacraments through which he creates and strengthens faith, but rather cling to those things that are good and put anything that is evil out of your life. Finally, rejoice always. Pray continually. Always give thanks in every circumstance because This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yeah, in those two short chapters, there is an awful lot of emphasis on holy Christian living. And so I want to ask you this morning, brothers and sisters, how does that make you feel? When we hear that this is God's will, that you should live a sanctified life, What level of confidence does that leave you with in your hearts? Because I think when we look at a passage of God's word like the one in front of us today, a passage that is filled with God's law, his instructions for us in our life, there are really two places that we can go. And before I get into what those two places are, I'm just going to say that the difference between the two is the grace and peace of God. Grace and peace have everything to do with the way that we see God's law. Because without God's grace, without the peace that he's won for us in Jesus, when we look at a passage like this today, it takes us to a very dark and dreadful place to be. A place of grief and shame and guilt and disgust 
as we look at God's law and we see there what he demands from us, we we look at all of these instructions and we say, if this is what God expects from me, if this is what he wants from me, then boy, am I in trouble. Because God's law has a way of working like a mirror. And as we look into his law and we see our reflection, what we see is not something pretty. It's wanting, it's lacking, it's nowhere near the picture that God paints of what he expects from us. And so the law shows us our sin and it fills us inside with guilt. And that's where we'd be left in the face of the law if it weren't for God's grace and peace. But he doesn't leave us with just the expectations and demands of the law. He also gives us that grace and peace. Back at the beginning of chapter 4, Paul started by saying, it is God's will that you should be sanctified. But here as he closes out the letter, his emphasis is on the gospel. And he phrases it a little bit differently. Listen to what he says here. Now it's more a prayer, a blessing that rests on the promises of God. He says, may God himself the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. He calls upon God, the God of peace, to sanctify you, to make you holy. And isn't that what God has done for you? By calling him the God of peace, what the Apostle Paul is doing is he's calling to our minds the work that God has done for you through Jesus Christ your Savior. He's reminding us that he sent Jesus into this world with this in mind, that he would live a righteous life as your substitute and that he would then go to the cross where he would pay the punishment for your sins and he would do that to bring you peace. Jesus won peace for us on the cross taking our sins on himself and in exchange clothing us with his righteousness. And so God sanctified you. He made you holy by covering you with that righteous perfection and holiness of Jesus. And he continues sanctifying you. He is making you holy by sending the Holy Spirit into your hearts through the gospel message, through that good news of what Jesus has done for you. And so with God's grace freely given to you and with peace between you and God having been won, having been secured and bought for you on the cross by Jesus. Now, now how do we feel when we look at a portion of scripture like this that is filled with God's law, his instructions for us? Because without grace and peace, it took us to a place of guilt and shame. But with grace and peace, we are able to look at these instructions and we're able to say, yes, Lord. Yes, you have redeemed me from sin. You have won me away from that and set me apart so that I can live a new life in you and for you. So yes, Lord, this is what I want to do. This is what I will set myself to doing with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind. Allow me to reread a passage that I've read a couple of times already this morning. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. When you hear that passage and you hear God telling you, this is my will for you, What I want you to understand is that that does not only mean that God is saying, this is what I want and expect from you. But what God is also telling you here is, is, dear child, this is what I want for you. It is my will, my desire for you that you should be made holy. And if that is God's desire for you, then that is exactly what he will do for you. And he has already done it through Jesus. 
Paul continues with this prayer, this blessing. He says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, being found blameless in Jesus on the day that he returns, this isn't something that you have to be worried about. It isn't something that you have to doubt, am I holy enough? Am I blameless enough? Am I prepared enough for Jesus to come back? Because this is not something that you alone are doing. It is first and foremost something that your God is doing for you. Just listen to the confidence that Paul has as he talks about this. He says that the one who does it, the one who calls you is faithful And he will do it. God will make you holy. He already has. He continues making you holy. And he will keep you holy until the day that Jesus Christ returns. He has one piece for you in Jesus. He is sanctifying you through and through by the work and power of his Holy Spirit. He will Keep you blameless until the day that he returns. That, brothers and sisters, is grace. That is the love of God that we are talking about. It was hard won for you, but it has been freely given to you. Grace is yours. So now what do we do with it? Three things. Uh, that I will share with you what we can do with the grace that has been given to us. Three things, and then we'll close. Number one, grace is yours, so find peace in it. I'm going to ask you to do something this morning from the, the safety and security and anonymity of your home. Feel free to participate here in the sermon with me. Please raise your right hand. If you know, if you believe and trust that God, through Jesus his Son, has won peace for you. Uh, 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 Everything is all right and perfect between you and God relationship. That that God has won that for you through Jesus, through his death and resurrection. Raise your right hand if you believe that God has won you that peace. And now what I'd like you to do is raise your left hand if today and over the last seven weeks, you have felt deeply in your heart that overwhelming sense of peace. That at all times, you feel as though you are at peace. I'm willing to guess that there are more right hands up right now than left hands. But friends, what I want you to know is that if your right hand is up, if you know, if you believe that God has won peace for you in Jesus, then there is no reason at all why your left hand should not be up as well, why it cannot be up as well, because peace is yours. Grace is yours. And so in that grace, you can find that feeling of peace no matter what kind of chaos you are in right now, no matter what kind of struggle you are going through, you can find peace in the grace of God that's been given you. Number two, grace is yours, so share it. The second last verse from our text this morning, Paul tells the Thessalonians, I charge you before the Lord, to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. You know the grace of God through Jesus, that he lived and died and rose for you, that grace through which you can stand confidently on the day that he comes back. You know that grace. And now that you know it, sharing it is not optional. Paul uses incredibly strong language here. He says, I charge you before the Lord. I adjure you before him as though you are being put on the spot in a courtroom. That you have this letter read before all the brothers and sisters. That you share with them what it is that God has told you here 
in his word. It's as though Paul is saying, may God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you take this light of his word and hide it under that bushel. We simply can't do that because when we know that God has saved us, when we feel the peace that we have in that grace in our hearts, then how can we do anything else but let that overflow as we share it with other people? God's grace is yours, brothers and sisters. Share it. And finally, number three, God's grace is yours. Allow it to compel you. God loves you so much that he was willing to go to the cross and die to redeem you from your sins. God loves you so much that he has redeemed you from slavery to sin and to death so that you might live the very best life, a full and whole life with him. A life where you enjoy the full blessedness of God in a, a lovingly perfect relationship with him, in a perfectly loving relationship with people around you. God won that life for you. He came so that you might live and live life to the fullest. Those aren't just trivial facts, friends. This is the core of your identity. This is who you are. The fact that Jesus redeemed you from sin to live this awesome life, this isn't just a, a nifty thing for you to know. This is something through which God wants you to be affected at the very deepest level. That that message would resonate in your heart and transform you. So is that what it's doing? And does it even have the opportunity to do that? As busy as you may be right now, or as upside down and crazy as your life may have become in recent weeks, we have to make room for the grace and peace of our God. We must find time each day to devote ourselves to reading God's word so that we can find there once again the wonderful news of the love that he's shown to us in Jesus. And the amazing proclamation of the peace that we have with God because of the salvation that he won for us. Then when we have that time to read and study his word and to meditate on it, that's when the Holy Spirit is able to work through that message in our hearts and to create there a desire to, to burst forth and share it with the people around us. To share it not just through words, not just by sharing with them the written message of the gospel, but to share that love of Jesus with them through the way that we live our lives. By following that whole long list of instructions that Paul laid out for us here in 1 Thessalonians. And all the rest of the instructions that God gives us for living that life that pleases him, that life that is glorious and such a blessing for us as well, throughout all of his word. God's grace is yours, friends. Let it compel you to live your life for God. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God has given you his grace. He's won peace for you through Jesus. He is sanctifying you through and through by the power and work of his Holy Spirit, and he will keep you blameless until the day of Jesus. Friends, that's God's grace. His love for you, hard won, freely given. Amen. May that peace of our Lord and God, that peace which goes beyond our understanding, guard and keep you in him until life everlasting. Amen. Thanks for listening in. We want to be a community for the community with Jesus as our heartbeat. 
and teaching the Bible, preaching about it, is a big part of that. For more audio or video content, check out our website, themountmke.com. Thanks for listening in. Have a great day.